In this tutorial, I just want to give you an introduction to this brick rig that I created, and which we're going to use for an assignment where we have the brick up high and it falls down and hits a couple things on its way down. So normally you would think a brick doesn't really require that much in the way of rigging, but when you look at this you say, wow, that looks complex. Let's explain why we have what we have here. The red control around the object is our basic sort of global control, right? Brick global control. This is where we basically move the brick as a default position, right? And once we put this into position, we probably are not going to be using this global control again, most likely. The next biggest thing on here is the yellow arrow. And this arrow is your translate control. And all this does is translates your brick from one location to another, up, down, left, right, um, and forward, back as well, because we're in three dimensions. So that's how we're going to start moving the brick around. It also gives us kind of an indication of the orientation of the brick as well. We also have a uh, sort of a semi-oval kind of capsule shape around the brick, and that's our rotate. And this rotate is uh, how we're going to reorient our brick. You'll notice that the um, translate control is solely translate, whereas this one is has a rotate. It actually has all of the uh, different options of translate, rotate, and scale, but mostly you're just going to use it to rotate things around. And then finally, there is another control in here, and this is the one that deserves the most uh, input in terms of what does it really do. Um, and this one is a pivot control. And to understand the point of a pivot control, we kind of need to maybe pop over here into the side view. If I am to rotate my rig, if I grab that uh, rotate control around the outside, the capsule, and rotate here, see that's fine. It's going to rotate around the center of the brick. And that's perfectly fine, because normally a brick would rotate around at the center of gravity, which it's doing right now. But if that brick all of a sudden came in contact with a surface, if I had a um, cube that I suddenly create, for instance, and I pretend that this cube happens to be at a table ledge, and the brick is falling down, or it's just actually hanging off the edge here where it's uh, going to fall off because it's too far forward, then that brick is no longer going to be rotating around its center, right? That is going to not be the way it would normally rotate. As a result, we need to be able to change the location interactively of where that brick actually rotates. And if I look at this, in fact, just for my own sanity, I'm gonna pull that over there. If I grab my um, brick pivot control, and I just kind of pull it out of the brick all of a sudden, this is what it actually looks like. Now, its shape is relatively meaningless. It's really just to allow you more easy access to just grabbing it and knowing that this is the pivot control versus the orient control. And the pivot control, the thing that you need to worry about that is where is its center point? Where is that crosshair at in relationship to the brick? Wherever that is at, is where the object with a brick will rotate from. So if I come in here and put that pivot point right at the same location as the contact between these two, so something like right there, and now I go to rotate the brick, um, I'm going to need to rotate it from the pivot control that I already have selected, not this um, orient control. And that's a big trick right here with this brick rig. If you change the pivot, you need to now start rotating from the pivot control itself. Because if you try to do it the other way, I'll show you what happens. So uh, if I rotate now, here we are, we're rotating appropriately. So that's exactly what I would like to see right there, because that makes sense. Um, I mentioned that if we try to rotate from the capsule, from the orient control, what we get is uh, still a rotation from the direct center of the object, which is not what we want. So here's the story. What happens if I go in and rotate there? And you say, great. And now I want to go ahead 
And uh, if this were to all of a sudden sort of move forward, all right, it's falling forward. And uh, I want to now change the location of the uh, orient back toward the center, for instance. If I were to grab that orient, I'm uh, sorry, that pivot control and start moving it forward, ooh, this is bad news. Look what's happening. We're sort of chasing each other. And that is a problem because um, I need to use, I need to invoke basically a script that solves this problem for me. So I just undid there, I can just press Z. And now what I need to do is to go into my script editor. So to do that, I'm going to click on this button down here. That opens up the script editor and just pull it across from my other window. And the script that I am going to run, uh, I'm not going to have to write it, fortunately it's already written for me, was written in Python. So I need to click on the Python tab here. And I will go to File, Load Script, and I'm going to go and find that script. So we'll find it in my folder here. And week four. And it's going to be this one here. Snap Dynamic Pivot dot py, which stands for Python. And that loads in here. Now, just a couple things about this script. You'll notice that um, you don't need to really understand how Python works, but there are a few things in here that deal with specific names that are in our scene, like brick pivot control, brick orient control, and brick geo. You can take a look at what we actually have in the scene. Like if I click on the brick itself, that is brick geo. Brick orient control, that is that little capsule shape around the uh, brick. And brick pivot control, of course, that's the one that we were just using to adjust the location of the pivot. If you open your scene, and depending on how you either imported your brick rig or referenced it or whatever, and the namespace has changed, where the name that you see up here is not exactly the same as what you see right now, or identical to these, basically, you would need to change these names to match whatever the naming is in your scene. So that's really important. Otherwise, this script won't work because it's looking for very specific names. And if it can't find them, it just can't run. But fortunately for us, I've just opened up the brick rig and all the naming is the same in this case. So what I need to do now is I need to run this script. And in order to run a script, I will hit Control A to select all in my script editor and then hit control enter to run the script. And you'll notice that that, uh, now this has snapped back to its former location. And now if I'm to go and move things around, right? If I move that around, that just moves around normally, right? It's not competing with the brick anymore, which is very helpful. Uh, this will continue to rotate properly. So we're basically back to where we needed it to be. So that little script is very helpful. And it's something that I'm likely to need to use on a regular basis when I'm working with the brick rig. And as a result, I don't always want to have to come into the script editor to run it. So in order to uh, create a button here that I can just press and cause this script to run, um, I am going to go into my custom tabs and I already have that tab open and you'll see that I got a bunch of custom tabs that I frequently use for various purposes and in fact I actually have already previously saved the script out here so I'm just going to left click sorry right click on that and delete it um, and I'll delete this other one too because that's going to come up a little bit later so in order to get my code here as a button up here what I need to do is select all of it and come up here to save script to shelf. And if I press that, it's going to ask me, what do I want to call this thing? And the script is basically dynamic pivot. So I'm going to call it DYPIV. And you can only fit maybe, maybe PVT. Um, you can only fit maybe four or five characters that actually fit. All right, but anything longer would get truncated. So dynamic pivot. Now, if I were to do this again, just as a proof, bring this down here, 
Um, I would rotate from there, for instance, and now I need to reset it. Dynamic pivot. There it is. It just ran that script, which is awesome. So that is primarily the functionality that we have with this particular rig. And that's also why there are so many controls for it. Now, um, as we continue in the next uh, tutorial, I'm going to be bringing you through uh, a process of actually setting up an animation using this rig. And then we're going to have to encounter a few tricks along the way to help us out. So I will see you then.